we are here with three of our biologists from our North Atlantic right whale research program. They're going to talk to us a little bit about the species and how they conduct research on this whale. Hi everyone, I'm Katie. The North Atlantic right whale is one of the most endangered large whales in the world and their calving area or the place they come to give birth is the coastal waters of the southeastern United States. Because right whales are exposed to human activities on a regular basis, they've become known as the urban whale. Right whales were hunted to near extinction by whalers, but fishing gear entanglements and vessel strikes are their largest threats today. FWC collaborates with federal, state, and non-governmental organization partners in order to monitor the seasonal presence of right whales in their calving area off Florida, Georgia during winter. Tell us a little bit about how you conduct research to study these whales. Yeah, hi, I'm Jen. I'm part of the right whale aerial survey team. Aerial surveys are the primary tool that we use to monitor right whales in their winter calving area. Our main goals are to locate right whales and document their distribution and habitat use, monitor reproduction and calving, mitigate vessel collisions, assist in genetic sampling efforts, and to detect any injured, entangled, or dead whales. How are aerial surveys flown? So the survey area covers from Savannah, Georgia to Cape Canaveral, Florida, out to about 30 nautical miles offshore. The track lines are spaced three nautical miles apart. Surveys are conducted every day, weather permitting, of course, between December 1st and March 31st. We use a small twin engine airplane and fly at an altitude of 1,000 feet. Wow, so what happens when you spot a whale? So when we see a whale, we'll break from our track line in order to get an accurate GPS location. And that whale's location is then shared in real time with key agencies, ports, and commercial mariners as part of an early warning system communication network that was developed to help reduce vessel strikes. And these data are also used by scientists and managers to help evaluate right whale distribution patterns in the calving grounds in relation to various environmental factors such as sea surface temperature and also human activities like vessel traffic. We also take photographs of the whales in order to identify individual whales. Individual whales, so how do you tell them apart? So right whales have patches of rough skin on the top of their head called callosity. And the callosity has hundreds of small white crustaceans called cyamids or whale lice living on them. Since the whale lice are white, they help the callosity pattern stand out against the whale's black skin. Each whale's callosity pattern is unique, so we photograph their heads in order to tell them apart. Photographs taken over time from different habitats allow researchers to keep track of which whales have been seen and where they go or which habitats they use. We also use photographs to monitor injuries, births, deaths, trends in right whale health, and scarring from entanglements and vessel strikes. And our aerial survey team works really closely with researchers on small boats, and we use the photo ID technique to identify whales that we find during our surveys so that we can direct our vessel teams to specific whales that need to be sampled for genetics. Genetics. How are genetic samples taken and why are those so important? Hi, I'm Tom and I'm another member of the team here. So here in the southeast, we focus on collecting genetic samples from all the calves that are born each year. We use a specially designed crossbow bolt to collect a small sample of skin and blubber. It's about the size of a pencil eraser. Samples are used to determine individual identification, sex, and parentage. This information helps close demographic information gaps, improve population estimates, and identify carcasses. And in addition to assisting with the genetic sampling effort, by photo documenting every right whale sighting, we're also able to detect whales that might be injured or entangled. What happens when you find an entangled whale? Uh, the aircraft will remain on scene to fully document the whale, its injuries, any behavior and health condition, and we notify our vessel team that's on the water and other partners so that they can prepare for a response. What does a response to an entangled whale involve? So FWC is part of a network of trained responders located along the Atlantic coast from Canada to Florida. 
and those disentanglement teams respond to reports of entangled whales and collect photographs and video to better understand the entanglement configuration. Then working from small vessels using specially developed tools such as grappling hooks and knives, we work to remove as much rope and gear from the whale as possible. Disentanglement operations are incredibly difficult and dangerous because we often have to be very close to the whale. From photographs collected over many years, we know that over 80% of the right whale population has scars from entanglements. Only a small number of these entanglements are seen and reported each year. Many whales are seriously injured or die from these interactions, so we need to continue researching ways to prevent entanglements from occurring. What happens when you find a dead whale? Well, it does happen. Dead whales are towed to shore so that a necropsy, which is an animal autopsy, can be conducted by a team of experts in order to determine the cause of death. In a population this small, even the death of one whale per year can be detrimental to the species recovery. In 2017, NOAA declared an unusual mortality event for right whales due to an elevated number of deaths. Carcasses were found in both Canadian and U.S. waters, and of the whales that have been examined, vessel strike and entanglements have been the leading cause of death. Management measures to protect right whales rely on accurate data in order to be effective. And a thorough examination of each dead whale is an important part of the process. Right whales are endangered and they face a lot of threats. What can people do to help these whales? Great question. So an informed public will go a long way toward helping save the North Atlantic right whale from extinction. You can contribute by learning about right whales like you're doing right now and sharing that knowledge with your friends and family and also communicating support for regulations that protect right whales from vessel strikes and entanglements in fishing gear. And if you're a boater, stay alert. Post a lookout and know what whales look like at the surface from a distance. Slow down. 10 knots or slower in areas where right whales are known to occur will really help. Give whales space. Approaching whales and remaining within 500 yards is against federal law. And report sightings to the NOAA hotline. It's 877 whale help or the Coast Guard on VHF channel 16. And in Florida, whales are often close enough to be seen from shore. So keep an eye out for whales and report sightings to that hotline. These reports from the public contribute to the overall understanding of right whale demographics and distribution and habitat use in the Southeast US. So they're actually very important to us. And make sure to follow us on social media all throughout the winter, especially as right whales are traveling along the southeastern coast of the United States with their calves. And we invite you to check out our website and Flickr photo albums for more photos and more information about these North Atlantic right whales. Thanks so much for talking with us today, and we look forward to hearing more soon. Thank you.